This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, football fans, and welcome to The Onside Kick. My name is Ricky Widmer, and as always, I'm joined by the Mark Weber. Hey, how's it going, guys? And uh, you may notice, hey, Ricky, there's a different bed that The Onside Kick is using today. What's the deal? This is our way. We're playing the equalizer under us right now to play, I'm going to say, homage, a little tribute to uh, Ed Sable, Mark, died 98 years old, NFL Films, and... uh, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I always remember watching the old NFL films about the old Super Bowls, the Immaculate Reception. It was where, as a young child, I got to see maybe, like, growing up in Chicago, Bears-Packers rivalry yeah. and the history behind it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially, I think, now, uh, definitely important to a lot of people because of the fact that we can go back. I mean, we are in the instant gratification mm-hmm. age where we can go back at any time and see anything we want. Yep. And and uh, the NFL films is a big, important part to that. Well, and we got a jam-packed podcast for you today as we missed the first mock draft because we were kind of getting ready for this thing called the Super Bowl. But Todd McShay came out with his second, his 2.0 mock draft 2015, and there's a huge surprise in it. And I'm going to play spoiler alert right out of the gate. At the beginning, we thought there were two quarterbacks that were going to go 1-2, but Mark, Todd McShay, he thinks that one quarterback is going to go number one overall to Tampa, the other one is going to fall out of the top five. Jameis Winston is going to Tampa Bay, and if Todd's right, Mariota's six to the Jets. The Jets. You know, it's interesting. Um... I, I would be kind of sort of surprised if we didn't have a 1-2 situation, uh, possibly with a trade going on to mm-hmm. make it happen. Um, but at the same time, if we remember the last couple drafts that we've had, a lot of teams are very skeptical about taking that quarterback right away because you had situations like Sam Bradford where it still hasn't quite worked out. You got, you know, Christian Ponder didn't happen. Um, we You know, you, you guys like to pretend that never happened up Okay, there. no, Christian Ponder was the... That was the it's draft. It's a panic pick. Well, it was the, okay, we want Jake Locker. Yeah. Oh, crap. The Titans took Jake Locker. What do we do? We take quarterback. When we could have waited, mm-hmm. got Colt McCoy in the second round, I believe. And then, okay, we wasted a second round on our quarterback sure. and not our first. That kind of you know, overall, adds to it a little bit more. Where 12th overall, I think, Ponder yeah. was. But that adds to it a little bit more when we're talking about Ponder. You're mm-hmm. talking about... Uh, you bring up Locker, you bring up uh, the old the old man quarterback that yep. the uh, Browns wanted to draft. We have all these quarterbacks that we've taken uh, and had it not work out. RG3, of course, being a good one, too, because of that trade that had to happen. So teams are getting a little bit more skeptical. We're not in the let's draft five quarterbacks in round one type of mode anymore. Well, that this draft doesn't have that. Yeah, but I mean, even in previous drafts, they didn't have to have that for teams to take it. Uh, so I think teams are being smart, and if a quarterback falls out of the top five, it's not the biggest surprise in the world. I mean, in the top five, three of them have quarterbacks. There's only two teams, mm-hmm. and they happen to be number well, one and number two. And not just that, and I'm going to go and on the record say, I think Marcus, Ma- everyone is saying that, oh, Jameis Winston, he's the, he's the most pro-ready for the NFL. Yes. But I don't know what it is. It's the... For me, I'm going to say it's the head on the shoulders of Mariota and the Jameis Winston and all the off the field issues. I just do not feel that in the end, Winston is going to be a better quarterback than Mariota. I'm not saying Winston's going to fail and be like Tim Tebow or what we're seeing with Johnny Manziel, even though Johnny Manziel, it's kind of early. Tim Tebow's not a failure. He won a playoff game. Okay, he did win a playoff game, but still, he's not in the league any. He's on the SEC Network. That's what he's, doing. he's wearing a suit. He's back. It's his home. new he's uniform. He's back in his home. He loves it in the SEC. But I kind of feel like Marcus Mariota, to me, is the better pick. But if he's going to be the one to fall, if he doesn't mm-hmm. go one or two, the only two teams I feel like need quarterbacks. Jacksonville's got Blake Bortles. They got him last year. Raiders have Carr. 
the Redskins could go with a quarterback. They're pretty. They're pretty sold I on mean, RG three still. Well, and the big thing about RG three is, did you hear what uh, what they put into their and they sent in a letter to their ticket holders? Uh, he was not included. He was not included, and that to me is Jay Gruden saying, "Hey, man." I don't want you here. You got to really prove to me that you belong here. They could go. The Jets, the big thing, I know Todd McShay has Marriott going there, but with the new coach coming in, is he going to right away say, you know what, Gino, failed experiment. I'm cutting ties right away. I'm not doing what Rex Ryan did. Mm-hmm. I'm not handcuffing my guy to a I'm quarterback. I'm not getting a tattoo right now. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Um... You you name the teams that already have quarterbacks, uh, which is very true. Uh, the Jets don't have a quarterback. They probably need a quarterback. And I think for the Jets, they're saying, if he drops beyond us, yes, you know, none of these teams really need a quarterback, except for maybe the Rams. Mm-hmm. Um, but someone in this round, you can trade up now. Once you get to an 8, a 9, a 10, it's possible to make that trade without losing too much of your future. Um, so you do get a little bit nervous in that case. Uh, not that they're going to get Mariota in the second round or anything like that, but maybe they could think to trade back up. Um, I don't know. So I, I think if he falls to you, you just got to take him. Uh, but when it comes to which quarterback should be taken first, and don't get me wrong, guys, you're going to get sick of this argument because we're going to, we will have it. ESPN will have it. You know, Fox Sports 1's going to, everyone's going to have this argument for until the draft starts you know literally until the first guy gets taken Mm -hmm. um but you 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 can't deny the fact that Jameis winston is the more pro ready quarterback you put him in an offense and you will effectively be a better offense than one that given you know all things being even uh then you put Mariota in that offense Jameis winston just gonna play a little bit better from day one Will Mariota, you know, do better later on? It's possible, but he's still a project player. He's not a project player like the guy you drafted in the fifth round, but he's still a project player. So you can't take him number one overall. You don't pick a quarterback number one overall and then let him sit on your bench while he learns. Well, and the one thing I was going to say is after the Jets, let's say Mariota doesn't go to the Jets at all. I mean, the Bears, to me... I'd rather have Marcus Mariota over Jay Cutler, but you're that's me. I'm a Cutler hater. You're paying hater. 15 mi- yeah. million for a guy you're to not, sit on the bench. You're not going to draft gonna Jay Cutler. Or you're not going to draft Mariota. You have Jay Cutler. The Falcons, they've got Matty Ice. The Je- are the Giants, I almost said Jets, New Yorks. I'm thinking the same thing here. They have Eli Manning, and you could throw in the argument that, Arguably hey, the better of the two. Eli Manning might Rings. be going over the hillish, but... He's still a quality quarterback, and I don't think the Giants are going to cut ties with him. Here's the most interesting team to me in the Marcus Mariota sweepstakes, and their colors are not green and white or green and silver. Their colors are blue and gold, the St. Louis Rams. Mm. Because yesterday there was a report that apparently there are teams at the top of the draft that would prefer having Sam Bradford over Mariota or Winston. They would rather have Sam Bradford. And if I'm the Rams, I'm sitting there going, hey, if we can work it, like, if I really, like, okay, Mariota or Winston could be our guy, I'm putting a package deal with the, I believe it's the, what, 10th overall pick and Mm -hmm. Sam Bradford, and I'm trying to work a deal with somebody to get either Mariota or Winston. if Yeah, I think, um, I don't know, it, I agree that if Sam Bradford is healthy all 16 games, very hard to have that happen. But he's not. But he hasn't what, been. But that's what I'm saying. If he is, very hard to have it happen. But if he is, he is a better quarterback than Mariota right now. He's probably, well, he's he's just probably got, a better quarterback than Jameis Winston right now because he's got the experience. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The one thing that he has over them is he's been in the NFL. He has the experience. He but spent a lot he's of time prone. watching that tape. A lot of time watching tape um, because of the fact that he's injured. But it's just I don't know what you can do. Can you really trade? I mean, you might get him for a steal. Maybe you get you know you trade like a third round pick and some scrub you don't mm-hmm. care about. You know that's a good deal right there. He played out of four. Seasons in the NFL, he's played 16 games twice. His rookie season and his, you could call it, junior season, if we're going 
relating it to college. And Third I mean, season. if we're going to complete that trend, this is how the trend goes. Plays all 16 rookie, his sophomore season only plays 10. Then plays 16 again. Then last season, his fourth season in the NFL, he plays seven. So if the trend continues, he's going to play all 16 this season. And and there's two things we got to remember. Uh, there's a few things, actually, that I'm going to throw out there. One of them, uh, contract's almost over, and he's going to be a guy that gets a lot of money. Maybe not $100 million, but he's going to get a lot of money. Doesn't he already have a ton of... Wasn't oh, he, he was the last... Uh, he was the, he was last, the last one to get the big contract before the... Yeah, and he's not going to take, like, the same contract here. He's going to be expecting something big. Because he was the draft right before the lockout, right? Yep. Like, it was draft, lockout. Yep. Uh, and then the other thing would be, I think that the Rams actually are a team where they could trade him in the offseason, not end up with a quarterback in the first round. And I think he'd be all right. Because they played okay without him anyways. Maybe you can go pull something off to get, you know, some veteran who will maybe be competition in the, you know, in the offseason or mm-hmm. just get the job. Uh, I, I think you'll be okay in this situation because you're not ready to strike yet. You're still a couple of years from really being able to make a run. You know what you're really waiting for? You know when's your time to strike when you're the Rams? When you're the L.A. Rams? It's possible. That's your time to strike. It's definitely a, definitely a possibility there. And, I mean, I'm looking at who they – Todd McShay hit. I like the position that Todd McShay has the Rams going with. Kind of go off what you said. If the Rams, let's say, don't don't make the trade, don't draft a quarterback in the first round, they can be fine. If hey, if other teams are saying, hey, I'd rather have your guy over the two guys in the draft, me, I know I said not even like two minutes ago that I would make that trade. That's because I'm not a Sam Bradford fan. Maybe someone in the upper office, the front office of the Rams is going, hey. If they rather have my quarterback over those two guys, why would I not want him over those two guys? You know what I'm saying? Sure. Maybe I should want him too. And Todd McShay has him going wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Kevin White, West Virginian. Just to give you a little bit about the stats, Kevin White finished six among all Division One A receivers at 1,400. 1,447 yards, and he also had 10 touchdowns in the season, 109 receptions. I will say, it's been a while since we've seen a good draft day trade, like on-the-floor trade that really included a good player. RG3? The last no, no, one no. involved Where the Rams. Where you traded a good player. Oh, okay. Like, you, like the Rams trade Sam Bradford to somebody, obviously for something better. Um, that'd be cool to see. Uh, it's not gonna happen, but it'd be cool to see. Uh, and it does make trades easier when you have when you can mm-hmm. package a player that you your organization decides you don't want, you don't need. Uh, I I think though, I can't imagine Mariota falling out of the top ten. Whether someone trades up to get him, uh, or it's just the Jets, the Titans, or of course the Rams, he I can't imagine him falling out of the top ten. There's too many quarter are too many teams that need quarterbacks. I mean, even the Browns can trade up a few picks. You know, trade up to number nine to just get above the Rams. You're talking about to get Mariota or Winston? Yeah, they. I mean, they've said they're okay, interested. Okay, here, here's the thing, though. If you're Cleveland, how much of a is it? Is it a good thing? Let's say, take off your Bears hat, Mark. Mm-hmm. You are no longer a Bears fan. You're a Cleveland Browns fan. Cool. Welcome to the Fed. Factory of sadness. Not not hard to imagine. Take your seat in the dark corner mm-hmm. because we're gonna lose a lot of games. Do you got any tissues by the way over there? Oh, we got tons. All right, good. We got tons of tape. We're gonna need a few. We've got more in the closet if you need it. But you're a Browns fan now. Mm-hmm. Are you mad if your team says, "Hey, we're gonna trade up. We're gonna get this quarterback. We screwed up last year. We shouldn't have drafted Manziel and just finished the Manziel experiment." Or are you one of those people that are saying, "Whoa, whoa, wait a second. We drafted this guy. Let's give him his due. Let's give him his due. I think I'm asking uh, in this situation, though, do we keep Hoyer or who's our quarterback? Who's who's the other option here? I don't think Hoyer's staying. I think Hoyer's going. I think going. he's gone, too. 
Uh, although he's probably feeling pretty good right now that Manziel is because in the rehab clinic. Because another thing that I think plays into the Hoyer not coming back mm. is the whole texting scandal thing, text gate, if you want to call it that, about the— Please don't call it that. It's the—what was it? The owner of Cleveland that was— uh, Making, I don't might know. get fined for texting during the game. Something silly. Apparently, Hoyer was kind of slid into that. So, I think to avoid stuff, they're just going to cut ties with Hoyer and let him go. It's possible. But for me, if I'm a Browns fan and we have no quarterback, I'm saying, what have we been doing the past 10 years? You know, like what is happening with this team? What is our direction? Uh, I want to have somebody to be excited about. But I am at number 12. You know, I am excited if we get a good wide receiver because we could have gotten one mm-hmm. last year and we didn't. Uh, and we knew we should have had one. We knew we needed one. Uh, we as in the Browns. I'm excited if we, you know, go offensive line. The defense is probably pretty fine. Uh, maybe running back. I don't know. I, there's quite a few things that we could get. I wouldn't be happy of running back at number 12. But honestly, if I'm a Browns fan, as long as you're improving my offense, I'm fine. I would prefer them to not take a quarterback because I don't believe in either one of these two guys uh, for the fact that we're going to have to trade up to get one. And Mariota falls at number 12. All right, I'm not I'm not upset. That's fine. But if I had to trade up to nine to get him, I'm not happy about that. And I'm right now looking, the reason why I'm so into my laptop is I, after you said it, I had to do a little research. When you were like, when's the last time we've had some good dr- – Draft trades, because obviously, like you said, people are talking about the Eagles going to trade up for Mariota. We've talked about the Browns, the Rams. I've got a few for you. Number one, and this is me going through this list of the ones that are in our lifetime. Yeah. We're in our 20s, so we're not going to go with the 70s and the 80s. Here's here's a number one. Randy Moss to New England for a fourth rounder in 2007. Of course. Then you have the Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers trade, no four. They weren't in the league, but yeah. that was a big trade. It was a big trade, but not necessarily what I'm, what I'm just thinking. How, Randy Moss is more. Marshall Falk to St. Louis in 99. Mm. Then they go on and play in the Super Bowl that yep. next season. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. That's when you're excited. Ricky Williams to the Saints for the entire... 1999 draft. Mm. And then number one on this list, that was number three, it's Patriots pass on who? Jerry Rice to the Bay. Yeah. And that was when New England uh, made a trade that took them out of the running to draft arguably the, uh, I say arguably the best wide receiver of all time because I don't know if you heard this, uh, Jerry Rice last month recorded, uh, he took part in an ESPN feature where they're talking about the new gloves that wide receivers wear. Stick them. Yeah. And he said that he used some stick them, but then said, oh, no, no, don't worry. All receivers did it. And then my boy Chris Carter said, whoa, you hold your mouth because I never use stick them. Do you think uh, Jerry Rice, do we need to open up that Pandora's box of uh, best wide receiver talk? No, I don't think we need to. I mean, you're talking. I mean, essentially, we're we're using steroid era arguments. Okay, baseball. Of baseball. I mean, that's what it is. We're talking about the time where stickum was okay to use. It wasn't when Jerry Rice. It was banned in '81, though. Yeah, but people used it anyways. And it was still banned. That's what I'm saying. But you still use it. Steroids were not okay to use all the time. They're still not okay to use, but people use them. Let's get back to the draft. Mm-hmm. A top five pick that I am very interested because. I would love for this to happen. Oakland Raiders, last year, they go ahead and say, hey, you know what? We're going to take our boy. We're going to take a guy that'll man the ship on offense, Derek Carr. Now let's give him someone to throw to. Todd McShay, Amari Cooper, Alabama wide receiver, going to Oakland? He going to be a Raider? They need somebody to throw the ball to, right? I mean, there's a lot of things that the Raiders need. Uh, But yeah, I say get started on offense. That's the best way to do it. You got a quarterback you're happy with, um, get him someone to throw to. Of course, he could probably use some line help as well. But I think having a true number one is such an important thing. 
And we don't know if Derek Carr is going to be a great quarterback, a good quarterback, an average quarterback. I, we don't know. I think he showed that he's got rookie the, season. He's got. I know, but he's got the potential to be. I'm not going to say Hall mm. of Famer, but he has the potential to say, "Hey, you know what? I can compete in this league, and if you surround me with the right players, we can get something done." Potential doesn't mean much to me. I'll just say that potential doesn't mean much. You won three games, but here's the thing. Three more than we thought there. We said four wins and they get a parade. Remember that. They, well, they're not having no parade, Ricky. Uh, but here's the thing. Derek Carr, you don't really know what you have. Mm-hmm. But we know, and where I'm going with this is, remember Andy Dalton. Mm-hmm. Why did we say Andy Dalton's a pretty good quarterback? Because he's got A.J. Green. That's what makes him good. And that's what you need. Get a number one who can make your quarterback good if he's not that good or make him great if he's good or make him exceptional if he's great get somebody who can elevate him make him just a little bit better here's my question though yes todd mcshay has the jacksonville jaguars at three going with a defensive end my question is because obviously this is a mock draft todd mcshay doesn't know what's going to happen on draft day what are the odds that we already i we can say we already know Tampa's not going with a wide receiver and Tennessee's not going with a wide receiver. They're either going to go quarterback, quarterback, or quarterback defensive end. I don't think Leonard Williams slips out of two if we don't go quarterback, quarterback. So at number three, are you buying that the Jaguars would say, hey, let's go with defensive end help, let's beef up our defense? Or do they say, they look at the same coin. Hey, we got Blake Bortles. I know Alex Hearn was kind of like a shot out of nowhere last year in fantasy. You do have Marquise Lee, maybe Cecil Shorts. But do you maybe say, hey, Amari Cooper's too much to pass up. Put him with Blake Bortles and that can be special. The thing I like about uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars right now is that they are... They seem like they're a team very committed to a slow build. We are going to build a really good team, and it's going to take a while, and we know that. A it's going to be painful. A real slow burn, Mark? For sure, man. <laughs> and I think there's a there's a good amount of defensive end talent here. I, I really like the, um, the you know defensive line talent that we really have in this draft. The wide receiver talent, it's definitely good, too. Uh, but it's not like the past couple of years where we've had some real guys who you're just you're so excited about. You're willing to do whatever you can to get these guys. Uh, I I think I do go with the defense. Build it nice and slow. You know you got uh, you got Bortles. Almost forgot his name. You got mm-hmm. Bortles out there. He's not going anywhere. You can wait a little bit to get some wide receiver help. Right now, make that defense better. And let that whole team, because you improve that defense, you make that game easier to win. You make every game easier to win when you have a better defense. Well, and I mean, for me, it's all about, when I think about, and maybe this is because my favorite college team is the Illinois Fighting Illini, and their head coach always talks about... A lot of people just started laughing, by Yeah, the way. but they he always talks about the right fit. Oh, when we recruit a guy... It's about the right fit. And I feel like when you're drafting, you have to go through that that same kind of process of, yes, this guy's a good talent, but how is he going to fit with this team? And I'm just looking down the draft, and Todd McShay has him going a, a lot higher than, let's say, WalterFootball.com. But when you got a guy like Devin Smith, Ohio State, I mean – Six foot one ninety, yeah, he kind of won a national championship, and did a thing against uh, Amari Cooper's Crimson Tide in the Sugar Bowl. Mm-hmm. Kind of makes me think if I'm Jacksonville, not Oakland. If Amari Cooper's there for Oakland, you take it because Oakland needs a wide receiver. But maybe for Jacksonville, you go, hey, we can get a wide receiver because I'm looking at the very bottom, top five prospects still available according to Todd McShay. You have Jalen Strong, wide receiver, Arizona State, Philip Dorsett, wide receiver, Miami of Florida. Here's something I want everybody to remember, of course, with uh, with Jacksonville. And for this pick uh, in particular, uh, 6'6". If you don't want to go with him, let's skip over uh, uh, Shane Ray, of course. Uh, 
if you want to go down to uh, to Armstead, 6'7", who do you got to play twice a year? Andrew Luck. Mm-hmm. If I can get somebody there to J.J. Watt that. That can pass rush And him. just bring it down. Not only the pass rush, but get those hands up. Mm-hmm. Block that pass or n- negate a side of the field because you are there and your hands are up in the air. I'm excited about that because those are two games that I couldn't win before that now I can win. I'm excited about that. Well, and I mean, Todd McShay in his description, I was reading a little bit of it. Jacksonville's biggest need is a right tackle, but that's the thing. When this isn't a draft like when uh, what, what, the Vikings were, what, fourth or third, or we traded up from four to three with, uh, that was the Trent Richardson trade, so that we could get Matt Khalil. Mm-hmm. There's no Matt Khalil in this draft class. No. There's no offensive lineman that's going that high. I think the first offensive lineman. I think it's the Giants. McShay has going. Yep. It is uh, Brandon Sheriff out of Iowa. That's the first one he has going. This isn't the draft class where you're going to get a high end. This well, isn't the two, Eric Fisher. Well, yeah. Was it two years ago that we had like four offensive linemen mm-hmm. in the top? I think it was what? Top uh, six. Who was the guy out of Texas A&M too? It was it was a it was we a We had a draft. guy out of that was a Texas sexy A&M. Draft, you had uh Eric Fisher out of Central Michigan. I believe nothing, he went to the Chiefs number quite one like overall. Like a bunch of guys who weigh about 280 to 300 pounds mm-hmm. all getting drafted right away. That's a great draft. But yeah, I mean I I like the amount of defensive players that are going early on in this draft because we had all the off and you know the NFL loves its offense. But now of course we're moving back towards all these people going, "Hey, our offenses are all really good right now, or some of your offenses are really bad. But we need somebody who can go against these really good offenses. Well, I Let's mean, get some defense to help us out and make this game easier to win. If Todd McShay's 100% correct, which he won't be, we never are. You never know. Out of the top five, he's got one, two, three out of five mm-hmm. defensive players. If we go top ten, that three becomes four... Five, five out of ten. So an even fifty percent offense to defense in the top ten picks. Definitely. But the one thing I want to kind of, kind of a double pick, and this to me, you're a Bears fan. I'm a Vikings fan. Mm-hmm. Todd McShay has the Bears going with Danny Shelton, defensive tackle, Washington. He's got the Vikings going with Devontae Parker, wide receiver, Louisville. I don't know about you, Mark. Me, as a Vikings fan, looking at that pick, I love it. Give Teddy Bridgewater someone to throw to. What are you thinking about that Bears pick? How would you feel if the Bears said, yeah, we're going to go with Shelton out of Washington? Well, I, I would have loved to have a defensive tackle last year's draft. Uh, didn't get one. Kyle Fuller, uh, he's fine. He, he's doing his thing over he, there. He panned out. He, for the most part. For the most he part, panned yeah. out. Uh, he was pretty worth what, he, what we got him for. D- did he get injured, though? No, he played. Okay. Uh, I mean, he may have gotten injured at some at point. At the end. Didn't he get injured towards the end of the season? I don't remember, but he was playing. Okay. So that's what matters. Um, well, he had to with Tillman out. Exactly. And that's uh, nothing's going to change. If Tillman plays for the Bears, he's going to get hurt eventually, probably, you know, week two. Uh, because it, there's just not much left out of him. Uh, but I would love to have a big. And if we're going with Shelton, we're talking big. Mm-hmm. 343. That is a big man. But. We don't know what's going to happen yet. What is new defensive coordinator going to do? Uh, Vic Fangio here. Are we staying in 4-3? Are we going to switch completely to 3-4? Are we hybriding this stuff out? I think this is saying, hey, you want 3-4? I'm giving you guys 3-4 right now. This is a guy is this who can that be no- nose tackle. Is this that nose tackle? There's a big say that man you that takes about? up space and can knock multiple people down on the ground on well, his way to a quarterback. And not just that. Out of, I'll say... Out of the three teams you're going to play mm-hmm. in the NFC North, depending on what happens in Minnesota because of the whole Adrian Peterson thing, let's say Adrian Peterson gets reinstated sometime in the near future and the Vikings don't get rid of him. Three out, Two out of your three opponents in the division, Eddie Lacy, AP. You got to go up against those two backs twice a year. Joy Bell, Reggie Bush, and eh, not so uh not so worried about you guys. Oh yeah, for sure. It's all about AP and Eddie Lacey. And no matter what you do, three, four, four, three, that's a guy you can put right in the middle 
and especially for AP, he can hit the outside, but more for Eddie Lacy because he's more of an up-the-middle guy. Mm -hmm. Come right at me, big boy. Come and, right I mean, at me, Lacy. The Bears have still been trying to uh, figure out a way to get to quarterbacks easier, mm -hmm. and this is a guy who's going to get double-teamed probably. He's a, yep. he's a big man. He needs a double team. So that makes it so Almost much easier. 400. Do you feel like he has to shed a few pounds to be effective? I, I like him big. I like this guy <laughs> nice and big. Uh, he probably can shed a few, but I like it that the fact that he's nice and big. Knocks people right mm -hmm. over. Uh, but for me, as a Bears fan, I'm saying, hey, take your pick. Our defensive coordinator, welcome to Chicago. Take your pick. Any defensive player you want, I'm fine with. You want a safety? Take a few. You want a linebacker? <laughs> Knock yourself out. Defensive tackle? Wonderful. Avoid the defensive end, avoid the corners, and I'm happy. And one of the things I'm looking at is, let's go down further in this draft pick. We're going to go past the Browns at 12, past the Saints, past the Dolphins, who uh, you say Tannehill might get a, uh, get a little bit of a deal? It's looking like he's getting $100 million plus $100 million. Maybe six, seven years? Getting that, that, getting that big boy big contract? Boy you know, but that's the thing. That's what the NFL... That's where we're headed. Yeah, that's the market for quarterbacks right now. And until something changes, uh, the play style of the NFL or the rules change to not, you know, say, hey, quarterback, have fun out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get these huge deals from people who probably don't deserve it. I mean, he is a sub-500 quarterback. And he's going to get this huge this huge deal. Uh, that, that's pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. The pick I am more interested in, in Todd McShay's draft as we head down, number 15, San Francisco 49ers. It's a guy I talked about earlier when we were mentoring wide receivers, Devin Smith. Because mm -hmm. there's one thing about Devin Smith. Early on in the season, let's be honest, a lot of people weren't paying attention to the Big Ten. The Big Ten was that conference that everyone was joking about. Hey, are they even a real football conference? Are they even going to have a team that fights for the playoff spot? Oh, and they fought. Not only did they get a team into the playoffs, they had their team win it all in the end, kind of laughing in their Way face. With a third string quarterback. And <laughs> not, that out there. not just the third, they Red had the second freshman. stringer first, then the third stringer who played only three games all season. 100%, baby. And. The big thing about Devin Smith, and I feel like, obviously, you're going to say, Ricky, this is a duh moment on you, but making the college playoffs, great for Devin Smith. Mm -hmm. Because that Sugar Bowl game and that national championship game, he was on the national, national spotlight and said, hey, this is what I can do. This is why you should draft me. Todd McShay has him going... 15 to the 49ers. I personally think that's a little high. I feel like I would put him right now last pick of the first round, New England. They, I mean, New England could use him. Uh, but, you know, McShay uh, and his little analysis here admits that it's early. Mm -hmm. And I, But I agree with his rationale of saying, hey, they need this kind of player. They need someone to stretch the field. This is the guy who's going to do it. And the thing about, you know, reaching, it's a reach when it doesn't work, but it's you being the genius when it does work. See, and here's the thing. Here, here's the bigger question I think is going to be started to ask about the 49ers. Not this draft. They're not going to look for the guy in this draft. But the question this season, because of Kaepernick's last season, and if it continues into 2015, is he the guy? Or... Two years ago, when he had Jim Harbaugh, and we went to the national, the uh, NFC Championship game, or the Super Bowl, and the Super Bowl, Bowl was yeah. that as good as it gets? Was that our shot, and we missed it with Kaepernick? I, I think that though is going to be more. That's going to fall more on the coach mm -hmm. than it will on the quarterback. I think you're going to get a situation where you say, "Hey, Jim Harbaugh got a lot more out of this guy. Maybe we should get somebody else because it's not working right now." And you know if things are not working with the quarterback, the odds are things are not going to work with other parts of the team as well. So I think that's a situation where you see them go, yeah, okay, let's get a new coach. And another thing is if you're the San Francisco 49ers, you have a wide receiver free agent that if you wanted to, you could say, uh, 
hey, Crabtree, go ahead and pull free right into free agency. Sure. You could say that if you're the 49ers, you're in the front office, you have a choice. Bring Crabtree back or draft a guy like Devin Smith at 15th overall. What are you doing? Or you know what? Why not both? Go for the riches. Who cares? Really? Get yourself a great. Get yourself more good wide receivers. Because what the thing we've been saying, you know, before is that the 49ers really needed uh, some wide receiver help for Kaepernick. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they tried through free agency and everything, and it's really, you know, they got some. They got a little bit of an improvement, but it was nothing too spectacular. In this case, you're saying we're going to a draft. We're getting exactly this guy that we want. We know what he can do. This just greatly improves our offense. And when it comes to playing Arizona, when it comes to playing Seattle, that offense needs to get better. Uh, and it's not a bad offense, but it needs to get better. Well, and with Seattle, the big thing about them this year, we're going to get to them in a little bit because Todd McShay's has them going with a key pick in the first round as well. But with Seattle, the key thing coming into 2015, forget about the Marshawn Lynch, forget about Russell Wilson getting a new contract. You know what, to me... Is going to be the biggest storyline heading into 2015 for the Seattle Seahawks. What's that? Life after Dan Quinn. Life after the guy who ran your defense and ran the LOB. It's possible, but you still got great players out there, so I think you're still going to get a lot of production out of them. But I mean, and one thing, going back to the wide receiver before we get off of that completely, I pull up an article, Top 25 NFL Free Agents and Where They Land by Mm -hmm. the New York Post. Not even worry about where they'll land. Though out of that 25, the wide receivers they list, Des Bryant, possibly going to go back to the Cowboys. I would if, say so. But if he hits the open market, that's a, that's a guy everybody and their grandmother is going to throw an offer at. Demarius Thomas, pro, if Peyton comes back, he's going back to Denver. There's no doubt about it. Get the band back together. New manager One at the front. Ride. We got a new record label. We're going for it. That's basically the analogy I'm going with that one. Uh, Scrolling down the list, tight end, Randall Cobb. New York Post says Seattle has uh, Cobb not going back Uh, to the uh, Cheeseheads. Maybe. Maybe. Jeremy Macklin, is he going to return to Philly? Where would he go? And scrolling down, any more wideouts on here? That's a cornerback, tackle, center. No, not that it looks like. So those are some big names for free agents. No, nope, one more. Torrey Smith. Of course, of course. Torrey Smith. Well, Torrey Smith, um, I don't know. Yeah, he, he had the huge breakout and then it's kind of, you know, fallen back a little bit. Uh, not talked about so much anymore. Uh, I, I just think uh, for, for if, I'm the, uh, if I'm the San Francisco 49ers, I think you're in an interesting position because you're in the middle of your division a little bit. You got this bounce back. Uh, I know they're not thinking this way, uh, but I'm not completely certain they're not going to kind of have some trouble coming back post Harbaugh. Mm-hmm. So why not just get yourself a weapon right now who will be very valuable? Do you think Tom Sula has what what it takes? I mean, he has been in this he's, role yeah, before as the interim for sure. He um, knows the team, right? But this is a, even for the best coaches out there. This is a hard position to come into. You're coming into somewhere where they had success with someone previously, mm-hmm. who a lot of people liked. Not just had success, had success right away. Oh yeah, immediate. Success. And that's even worse. Like it's okay if it's like, oh okay, this guy built up the team for three years, then we started winning. No, Harbaugh made the jump from Stanford to the 49ers. And it was like instant success. Maybe, I think it was what, his first season was iffy and then bam, Super Bowl. Well, I mean, the first season uh, is when Alex Smith, everyone was like, oh, that guy can throw the ball pretty decently. All right, cool. He actually got something out of Alex Smith finally. And then the next season was, uh, oh, Alex Smith. He gets Who's injured. that guy? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We got Colin Kaepernick. We don't need to worry about that. Oh, we all loved Colin Kaepernick for a while. No, and actually, I was wrong. His first season with the 49ers, and I'm talking about Harbaugh, mm-hmm. 13-3, and loses in the NFC Championship game yeah, to uh, like the Giants. Year. Then in 2012, they go 11-4-1, and losing the Super Bowl. And then in 2013, 12-4, lose to the Seahawks. Because remember, the eventual 
Both times they lost mm-hmm. in the NFC Championship, they lost to the eventual Super Bowl champion. Because that's the thing you got to remember. It's all, It was always Jim Harbaugh. He either gets you to an NFC Championship game or a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Except for that fourth year where he just said, hey, you know what? Wheels are falling off. I'm going back to college. It was a uh, see you guys later. Um, there's a lot of bad things going on there. Before we hit our next position, which is running backs in this draft, I got one more wide receiver for you. All well, right. I want... Wasn't sure if I was going to mention it, but I got it. No, because, no, you're feeling it. You're feeling it now. Well, to me, this is a guy, Devin Funches, mm-hmm. wide receiver, tight end too. He played. I think he started his tight end. Now he's a wide. He is a wide receiver for the draft out of Michigan. This is a guy that Todd McShay has going, and I know it's early. He has him going 19 to the Browns. I don't know. I think that. Devin Funches is not a first round talent. He is fall to the second round. I I think mm-hmm. you'd be stupid to take him, especially at nineteen. Nineteen. I think for the for the Cleveland Browns, they're really just at a spot where they need a wide receiver. And you well, got, they need offense. Yeah, they do. But they got they got this two. They got both these picks here. Twelve uh, and nineteen. You didn't go wide receiver at twelve, so you have to go wide receiver at nineteen. Is pretty much what it comes down to. And earlier on, for the listeners who are looking offensive at the tackle. draft, they took TJ Clemmings' offensive tackle out of Pitt. It's it's the situation where I mean, you need that help, of course, on the line. You need that help. Somebody needs a weapon to throw to. I don't know who that person's going to be, but they need well, a weapon. Well, that's the interesting question. Let's say at twelve they trade up to get Mariota or Winston. Uh huh. Do you have to at nineteen say, hey, let's get them something to throw to? Because Josh Gordon. And, I mean, this is another thing that, I mean, plays into it, and I can see where Todd McShay is going. They may lose Cameron, who mm-hmm. is supposed to be a free agent this offseason. They'll probably franchise tag him. They should. Because that guy will get some money somewhere. They're losing Josh Gordon for the entire next season. That's mm-hmm. already for sure he's going to be suspended or is already suspended. He's, he's not a player on a your full team year. anymore. He's gone. Well, and he even came – he was a guy where – and I know this in our fantasy league, your buddy, his name's Dave Watt, mm-hmm. was like, ah, oh, I drafted him, Shout I'm going to stash Dave. him. Mm. And I'm not going to lie, I looked at that and I was like, man, I wish I had him because he's going to be great when he returns. Nope. He came back and just laid a dud. Yeah. First game back, I believe, uh, had a catch go right through his arm. It's, it's like, really, bro? It's hard to come back bro? in the middle of the season, man. It's hard. Uh, I, I think, I don't know, the, the Cleveland Browns are kind of stuck. They could package these two together and trade up to four if they wanted. Do you um, really package it? Well, and I mean... If you if you really hey, want Mariota. And I, I was going to ask, do you really? But to be honest, when you've got, like we mentioned before, Strong and Dorsett, McShay has in the top five prospects still available after the first round, there's going to be wide receiver talent. And McShay, I believe, in this mock draft had, what, six wide receivers going? Mm. That probably won't happen. Here's something. Uh, if I'm either... Especially if I'm the Raiders, but I'm the Jaguars or the Raiders. My pick comes up. I'm making a call over to the Cleveland Browns and saying, "Hey, you guys want to play ball? <laughs> you guys got you guys got two draft picks. It, it's it's a little tough. I mean, if you're the if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, you're going to be asking a little much out of the Cleveland Browns. But that twelve and nineteen for the four, mm-hmm. that's doable. That is definitely doable. And the Raiders, they need a lot of help, and they can get it." Last thing that we'll mention in this uh, podcast about this mock draft. We got to talk about the running backs. It's been a... People draft those in the first round? It's basically been a mostly offensive draft that we're talking about. We'll get to the defensive players probably later as we get closer to the draft. But right now, the two names that everybody is circling on their draft boards. Melvin Gordon, junior running back out of uh, Wisconsin... And Todd Gruley, junior running back out of Georgia. Here's the thing. McShay's got Gordon going 27th to the Cowboys. Cowboys have uh, Des Bryant, DeMarco Murray. I'm assuming that most people are going to say, hey, you make Des Bryant the priority. If you lose Murray, who cares? You can draft either. Gordon or Gruley. Which is funny because for a while we were talking about Murray possibly breaking mm-hmm. a record last year. But, you know, here's times the mo- change. Here's the more interesting thing. And this is something that I would look at. What did I What did I mention 
when we were talking about the Bears, what did I mention about what you guys have to go up against? A lot of quarterbacks and a few running backs. Who's the one team that maybe sits at 23rd overall, about four picks ahead of that Cowboy pick that could say, hey, you know what? The Packers have a good running back. The Bears have a good running back. The Vikings have a good running back. We need a good running back. No, that's a dumb idea. Lions, 23, taking no, Melvin Gordon. Gordon, not Gruley. Bad Gordon. idea. Doesn't matter. Bad idea. Why? You There's a lot more you need. You need help on defense. You need somebody to keep Matthew Stafford on his feet. You got a lot of... You got, there's a lot that you need before you need that running back. Your running backs were fine. And you got Matthew Stafford and Megatron still. You're fine. Don't, don't, don't get cute. Don't so, get cute. So, you're saying go either the quarterback, offensive tackle, because to me... I feel like the smartest thing for the Lions to do, mm. you franchise tag Nadamik and Sue no matter what you do. Because yeah. I know he's I know he's a dirty player. Yeah, I don't like he's been done wonders for your team. I don't like him as a player, but he knows how to rush the quarterback and stop the run. He does it better than he's pretty a much big anyone boy. else. You'd be stupid not to keep him around at least one more year because as the Lions, you're possible, and I'm using air quotes, Super Bowl chance, is fading, and they go right down the drain if you get rid of Sue. Mm. Let's go back, though, to the real deal. Gordon to the Cowboys. Are you buying it, or are you saying, you know what, screw that, get Murray. Get Brian, get think Murray. I it's funny for both these two, with the, with the Cowboys and the uh, Seahawks, because you have two teams that have running backs, kind of, um, and now they're taking other running backs. But mm-hmm. does, I mean, we got to remember, running backs' lifespan is probably some of the shortest lifespan of players in the NFL. Uh, but I don't know. For either one of these two teams, I want the guy who I've had in my offense already and who I've had success with before I draft somebody else. I mean, for the Seahawks, it's not that big of a deal. You don't really have that many holes in the Seahawks team. But for the Cowboys, it's like you got other places you can improve this team. Why just make a hopefully lateral switch between your running backs? Mm -hmm. You're wasting a first-round pick in that case. I mean, yeah, if he leaves, you need one. But if you keep him, you don't need one. And then you can draft somebody else who will make a better improvement for you right now. That's what you should get. Go keep DeMarco Murray if you can. Hopefully you can. And then go ahead and get yourself, you know, that wide receiver, once again, depending on Des Bryant. Go ahead and get yourself some defensive line or something like that. And I just, after reading the first sentence of McShay's analysis of why he's doing this pick, he basically thinks that Des Bryant, DeMarco Murray, you got to let one go. And if it's me, you're letting go of the the running back who's going to turn 27 and has had an injury history. I kind of say even if you do finagle the money, and you get Bryant and Murray, you still go Gordon. Because to me, I have said it before, I think Gordon is going to be a special commodity, a special player in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Just watching him at Wisconsin. Maybe it's because I'm a Big Ten guy and I've watched a lot of Big Ten football. This guy's going to be special. You want that one-two punch? It's kind of like, it kind of reminds me when I was doing the fantasy draft, when Adrian Peterson was a rookie. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to take uh, Adrian Peterson. And everyone at my draft laughed at me because they're like, oh, oh, you mean the Adrian Peterson from the Bears? And I was like, mm-hmm. no, 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 the Vikings. And they all laughed and then look at what he became. Not going to say it's going to be exactly like that, but he could be a good back for wherever he is. I think the bigger, out of the two, Gruley and Gordon, the bigger question mark is Gruley. Because right now, Todd McShay has him as the Seahawks. Marshawn Lynch, if he wants to, if he's uh, still feeling a little down in the dumps, a little angry over, hey, why didn't you give me the ball? We could have been Super Bowl champions. He could really screw over the Seahawks here. He's entering his final year of his contract, doesn't have to make a move. They can offer him all the money in the world. He could just sit on it, sit on it, sit on it, sit on it. And if they think he's coming back, or that he's going to sign this deal, if he makes them think, hey, he's going to stay, we don't need to go running back, they could go something else, and then he could retire. Because the GM has came out and said that he fears that that Marshawn's going to retire. 
It's possible. And But to me, if your GM's fearing that, you have to go with the running back. You have to have your contingency plan mm. in place. And Todd Gurley at 31 overall is cheaper than Marshawn Lynch. Or if you're Richard Sherman, Marshawn Lynch. And it's I think it's a situation, too, where you uh, – the Seahawks, they're a best player available kind of team. Uh, not that I think position-wise, you know, you can save yourself – you can take a running back a little bit later, um, not you know at sixty two or whatever pick that are going to have next. But it's just an interesting situation for them because they can take whatever the hell they want. And they're fine. Mm-hmm. They're still going to compete next year. They're still going to be in uh, in the discussion for a Super Bowl title again. Uh, so I mean, it's definitely something you could you could possibly go for. Uh, I don't know. In that case, I, it's another situation where I, I don't think Marshawn Lynch is going to go anywhere. Uh, I don't think he's going to retire. I think he'll just keep playing. Remember, it's a team sport. He made sure to say that. Well, um, so he's not that upset, apparently. And I find it funny if you look at McShay's analysis. He says that, you know what, Gruley would be the perfect replacement for Lynch and that the best NFL comparison would be Lynch. Mm-hmm. And the only question mark that I have about Gruley, and it kind of reminds me of... Lattimore a, real, a little bit when the 49ers took him. I believe it was the 49ers that took uh, yep, they did. Lattimore. But he, if he doesn't tear his ACL, Gruley's a top 15 pick. And we're probably talking about, oh, who, who really needs a running back? I don't know. Maybe like the Jets. The Raiders. The Falcons. I want the Raiders to get We're talking back. about... We're talking about the Atlanta Falcons taking Todd Gruley if he doesn't tear his ACL. We're talking about him going number eighth overall. But because he tore that ACL, this top 15 talent is sliding down to 31 on these draft boards. Mark, just like I've done so many times this podcast, I'm putting you in the front office in Seattle. Does this ACL injury or past injury scare you? And would it deter you from picking him? Once again, you're in a situation for the for the Seahawks where you can say, I don't care. Anything? I can do whatever I want. Anything works? I'm not worried about anything, uh, really, because I got this team that's built up. You have for your me, quarterback. Yeah, I mean, for me, it, if I'm really that concerned about losing Marshawn Lynch, yeah, I'm going to go with whatever running back is there. Uh, I don't I don't know. I'm not, for me personally, I'm not that worried, though. Not worried about losing Marshawn Lynch. I think he'll be around still, and I could go with somebody else. But at the same time, well, really, what do I need? You know, what, what, what do I need? I mean, maybe mm-hmm. maybe I can take a wide receiver. My wide receiver's looking fine, but maybe I can get another one. Maybe just get something for that defense. I'll figure out a spot to put that guy. You know, I'll figure something out to make it work out. But for this situation, it's like, yeah, all right, that's fine. I mean, though, if it's probably – the Seahawks probably could use a better offensive line. I think I would take that before I want to get a, uh, a, running, a running back. Before a running back? So you would take that over a contingency plan for Lynch? Yeah, I mean, of course, I need to see how the board works out. There might not be anybody worthwhile at offensive line, uh, any offensive line position at the 31st spot. And then it's like, all right, fine, whatever. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll just take this. Or you can pull off the, uh, I've got everything I need, so let me just trade back. Let me collect for the future. I'll get more tra- uh, more draft picks later. Do we miss anything? Any last things you want to? Uh... The only things, um, the only thing I'd like to add, of course, uh, is, do we think the Eagles might trade? Do we think they might trade up? That's a, I. It's a. Yeah, it's a big hike. You know what? If I'm Chip Kelly, I am really liking, and I would even give away Nick Foles mm-hmm. to get Marcus Mariota because, like I said earlier, I'm a guy that's all about fit. Chip Kelly knows Mariota. Chip Kelly would feel confident with Mariota. Guess what kind of offense Mariota ran? The same offense. Not not the same offense. A better tuned offense than when Chip Kelly was there. Because the biggest difference between Oregon once Chip Kelly left was it went from Chip Kelly calling the plays to, I want to say, one of their assistants up in the box. And they just got faster. Mm-hmm. I think they said, what, 16 seconds between the 
between the down and the down. Like, mm -hmm. he got tackled, reset, ran the play, he's down again, 16 seconds. Took them 10 seconds just to get the ball set. That's yeah, a fast I don't know. offense. That's possible for sure. Because uh, during the Rose Bowl, oh, it was fast. Kurt Herbstreit wanted mm. a couple times to put the stop clock on, and they did. They timed it, and yeah. it was quick. By Definitely. the time they downed the ball, got it set, boom, they were running the next play in like three seconds. And I think they're probably a team that's most logical to try something crazy. It's a perfect fit for Mariota. Um, it's. I mean, you're trading two first round picks, probably though. If you want to get up to five. That's two first round. That's this year and next year. It's a big investment that you're making. The only other team that might make a trade, like I was saying before, Cleveland Browns. If you do want to package, you got two draft picks. Why not package them together? If Mariota's available at four, maybe five, you want to get him. You want to make sure nobody else, you want to make sure those Jets don't grab him. Mm -hmm. Why not trade up to five? Last thing I want to bring up, because I just found this article. It's on ESPN. It's titled... The missing pieces, Super Bowl XLIX. And what they did was they basically went through every team and were like, how many players, how many pieces were they missing before, like, to make it to the Super Bowl? Guess who number one was with no, no missing pieces? Probably the Seahawks. Nope. Seattle is at... I don't even think they're on here because they made the Super Bowl. I guess that would make sense yeah. in that case. If I'm going to say... Someone who didn't make the Super Bowl. So who Patriots, didn't make Seahawks the Super aside, Bowl who... Who had... Didn't need any additional pieces. They just got... They just got screwed. They got screwed. Who got screwed? I mean, I would say... It's one of two teams. The Arizona Cardinals got screwed no. if they have a quarterback. Think about who got screwed on a catch that should have been. You guys got to tell me. A catch that should have been. Think about it. You're talking about the in, in well, Lambo. You're talking about the uh, the, Cowboys the Cowboys who had their fun little uh, exchange of penalty with our teams. The Vikings, twenty third on this list, twenty three mm. players. The Bears, twenty four players. Yeah, away from right. making the Super Bowl this past season. The last place team, Jacksonville, thirty players away. Get that slow build going, man. Trade down, baby. The Ravens were actually the next up at. Two, the two teams that lost in the championship games, Packers were four players away, apparently, according to them. And the Colts were, oh, wow, I don't even see the Colts. Where are they? 20. Yeah. 20 pieces away. That's what away. I was saying. The Colts were overmatched, for sure. They just uh, had a that's great, why the flight gate didn't matter. They just had a great game against, uh, against Peyton Manning. Yeah. Well, Peyton Manning also had a horrible game. Yeah, and that, that helps out too. And that helps. But that's going to do it. This is actually going to do it for the onside kick this week. want to thank you guys for checking us out. Make sure to check out all our other videos on the YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button, like button, all that good stuff. Hit us up on Twitter, at Most Valuable Pod. Mark is at the with two E's, Mark Weber. I'm at Ricky with a Y, Widmer. And uh, anything I'm missing? Oh, mostvaluablepodcast.com. Make sure to book, bookmark that. Check it every day. We have videos, podcasts going up on the daily. Got to check that out. That's going to do it for the Onside Kick. I hope you enjoyed yourself. We will see you next week. And as always, have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod for more great podcasts.